Hi, I'm Jamie Mayfield, and I've had a request to show you guys how the V-Cam works. Now, what I'm doing is I'm sampling this new yarn that I got in from to for to sell on CSM Supplies. It's called Stone, and so I'm sampling it to see if um, I have my tension set properly. So I'm just going to go through making the heel because that's a great way to see if your tension is good or if it's too tight. All right, now you notice I have not installed a weight yet, so I'm really liking that for my tension. But now I wanna install this V-hook. Now there's all different kinds of V-hooks. This one is a sweet spot from Dave Lord. And so I'm gonna put the V-hook in. Now the reason they call it a sweet spot is because if you're good, and you put it in the right spot, you should only have to move it one time. Now, you know, I have a haphazard kind of lifestyle. And so, where I'm putting the V-hook, and I want to show you guys this. You can see it much better on SOC TV, but this will have to do for now. Okay, do you see the the tines of the, of the V-hook? Mm -hmm. Okay, when you come down, you can feel and see the downward pressure on these these stitches, okay? Now, it's worth fiddling around and trying to figure out where the right spot is. I can distinctly remember learning how to use the V-hook and it took me forever. So, once I put the V-hook in, I put the weight on. Now, I've already raised my needle and I can see that there is downward pressure on all of these stitches. It's a very slight. You kind of have to know what you're looking for. So it's worth it to when you install the V-hook, kind of pull down on it and see where your downward pressure is. And you'll notice I'm going slow on those first two stitches because, and you can see that one just started to ride up. So that's telling me your V-hook is becoming to where you need to move it. See how that stitch rode up? Mm -hmm. You can see that? Yep. Yep, right there. So I'm gonna raise that. Then I'm gonna move my V-hook. Now it's important to watch that I'm not putting it up as high as I can. Because if I do, then I'm not going to have downward pressure on these needles. You can see where I installed it this time, and you can see that I have downward pressure. Let's crank the row. Okay, and sometimes if I know, like I saw that one kind of lift up a little bit, I can pull on one side of the, the V to make sure that I have the downward pressure right. Now, I don't need to worry about raising and lowering two needles at a time because this is not a sock. I'm just sampling. So, I can lower two needles. It doesn't wrap behind the second one. Okay. Now, it missed that stitch, but since I'm just sampling, I don't need to worry about it. And the reason it missed that stitch and these stitches are riding up is because I forgot a really important thing. When I start my increase, that's when you put your V-hook as high as you can get it under only the working needles. Okay, right in there. Now I shouldn't have to move the V-hook until I'm ready to make the toe. So it's only on the decrease that you have to worry about the placement of the V-hook. That latch was closed and I didn't see it. So there you go. That's how you use the V-hook. Takes a little practice. It is my preferred method, and I love this sweet spot from Dave Lord at Chambord. 
All right, now this is the second needle. And a little trick to where you don't have that hole in the side is you, you decrease these needles, but you increase one less. See, there, this the first needle on each side, I still, I've decreased, but I'm not going to increase. I'm just going to go ahead and quit one row early, and then I would be ready to make the foot of my sock. And there you go. 